Amen. 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 God is good. There we go. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen and amen. We welcome everyone to tonight's broadcast and we just thank our God for this broadcast. And uh, so uh, you enjoy this broadcast and just know that God be for you who can be against you. Amen. And uh, I didn't hear an amen, but I will just. Yes. <laughs> Could you hear that? <laughs> Let me just see who else is joining. Uh, yes, brother Tom. Hi, <laughs> sister Phyllis. Let me put it all like that. There we go. Did I push the right one? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay. Can you see it? We can hear you. I, I tried three or four times before I got on there. <laughs> that is interesting. Let me just see here what is happening. It wasn't your fault. It was mine. <laughs> what is that? It wasn't your fault. It was mine. I couldn't get on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that this uh, double thing with the... Uh, camera uh now you got a couple of backgrounds there yes yeah. is that working uh now you've got the um prayer garden behind you and the church behind you that's good that's wonderful that's wonderful amen well praise the lord praise the lord we're gonna study mark chapter 12 verse 18 to 27 is that coming up on your screens yes okay on your screen yes and you can see it mark 12 18 through 27 okay that's wonderful great and we should be live on crc let me see here uh somebody left a comment for us amen somebody said i've just put it there on the screen and so somebody's watching hallelujah we are live brother tom do you mind shouting out loud so everybody can hear you and just commit this time to the lord yes sir i will dear heavenly father we thank you for the beautiful day absolutely gorgeous day that you have given us Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have now to come together and study your word over the electronic media. Yeah. We ask, Lord, a blessing for each and every one who joins us tonight, Lord. Be with Pastor, speak to us through him. Yeah. We ask, Lord, that your spirit absolutely invades our, our territory and, uh, and helps us tonight to understand the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And... Amen. Somebody give him a praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We have an exciting moment here tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Who said we must be sad when we do a Bible study? Amen. So let's go into Mark chapter 12 and verse 18 to 27. And we're going to look at various things here. It starts off with my little heading there. My Bible says, the Sadducees that asked Jesus, what about the resurrection? What about the resurrection? Then verse 18, then some Sadducees, very sad, disease. Very sad, disease. They came to Jesus. And you know why they were sad. You're going to find that right now. Then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection. See, if you don't believe in a resurrection, you're very sad. <laughs> then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection. They came to him, to Jesus, and they asked him saying, Teacher, teacher. I'm just going to put somebody putting yes, all good. Okay. Uh, teacher Moses wrote to us. Now, remember when they 
quote Moses to Jesus, they are bringing the law into the realm of grace. Jesus represents grace. Grace came to fulfill what the law of Moses lacked. Okay. So then some Sadducees would say there is no resurrection. They came to Jesus and they asked him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now watch this picture is really getting involved here. Okay. The first, uh, it says, now there were seven brothers. Seven brothers. Hallelujah. There's somebody else. God bless you, my precious brother. Love you too. Somebody uh, is watching us and putting that comment out there. Love you too. Okay. Uh, now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife listen to this the first took a wife and dying he left no offspring then the second brother took her and he died see that nor did he leave any offspring and then the third likewise so the seven had her i mean seven brothers Seven brothers married this precious woman and she outlived all seven of them. <laughs> I'm just smiling, okay, because seven brothers, she must have been a remarkable woman outliving seven brothers, okay. I'm just smiling because I have an imagination. And Lord help us. <laughs> okay. Therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as a wife. Very interesting. Very interesting. And Jesus answered, and he said to them, Are you not? Are you not therefore mistaken? Because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they will neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. We can explain all this. But concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses in the burning bush? The passage how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Yes. And, and the God Isaac and Jacob. And the God of Jacob. Jacob. Wow. Okay. And he said, He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. Can you see that? So let's start off with this. First of all, the question is, and I'm bringing it up on your screen. Can you see that on your screen? The question is about the resurrection. Is that coming up on your screen or on my screen? Can you read it? What about resurrection? Okay. Yes. You see, this is the typical legalistic attitude of the enemy's tactics to confuse what is right so what is right will sound wrong to confuse what is right so that what is right will sound wrong how there is a resurrection we know that because jesus raised lazarus from the dead to demonstrate that he has the final say after death. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. 
He has the fine. <laughs> that's that's our elder. <laughs> He's been rubbing <laughs> off on me. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's give. Okay. Let, let's just go back here. So then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him. I mean, they're coming to the one who says, I will be crucified, I will be flogged, I will be killed. And after three days, I will rise again. So they coming to clash with, they coming to clash with the resurrection standing in front of them, the truth, God's ultimate, the only way, the only truth, the only life. They coming and visualize this conversation and they are trying to trick him to confuse people and they said to him who is the resurrection Moses wrote that according to the law if somebody if a, a, a wife a husband dies the next brother can marry her and there's now been seven of these and she married all seven so when they now listen to this now there were seven, okay, and then this Pharisee was saying to Jesus, last of all in verse 22, the uh, woman died, therefore in verse 23, in the resurrection. Now remember, they're speaking about the uh, resurrection, but they don't believe in the resurrection. So they're actually uh, attacking the resurrection. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Because remember verse 18, verse 18, uh, it, it, we, we, he came to Jesus and he said, some Sadducees came and they said, uh, who, who believed that there's no resurrection, came to him and they asked him saying, teacher, and they tried to challenge what is right to confuse it with a wrong so that what is right will sound wrong. Does that sound like the world we are in right now? <laughs> Come on now. Does that sound like a world we are in now? <laughs> exactly. I've got your attention there. So, this Phar uh, Sadducee is now trying to tell Jesus that your theology, your doctrine, the stuff that you're proclaiming is now going to be challenged because when these, therefore in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? Whose wife? So they are trying to cancel life after death because they did not believe in the resurrection. And they're saying, since there's going to be this resurrection after uh, death, since you are talking about the resurrection, then this is very confusing because whose wife, since seven brothers married her, whose wife is she? going to be so they trying to paint a picture of confusion that comes in after death see you've got to catch the concept what is being uh, they, they, what they were actually after they trying to confuse the resurrection to try and say listen there is no life after death what they have missed what they have missed and jesus said this to him and i'm going to bring this up on your uh, on my screen here uh, scriptures what did jesus say to them jesus in verse 24 verse 24 for circle that that is huge in our lives jesus said and answered and said to them are you not therefore mistaken? 
You see, he had a way of working with the wrong. Instead of telling that you are wrong, you are no good. <laughs> he says, Jesus answered and said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken? Question mark, kind of. Because you do not know, number one, the scriptures. Number two, know the power of God. If you don't have an understanding of scripture, What is this person? Oh, is somebody saying this? Look here. <laughs> How am I going to fall asleep with all those effects? Hallelujah. <laughs> so, watch this now. He says, Are you not therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God? Jesus is saying two powerful things here, beloved. Two powerful things. Very powerful. He says, the power of God is to know Scripture. The power of God is to know Scripture. Because the Word of God says in John 1.1, 1, 1, Now for those who know me, I do not say, what some translations say, translations, some of them say, in the beginning was the word. The word never was for me. The word always is. But I am not imposing my conviction on you. So some translation says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, or is God, or was God. For me, in the beginning is the word, the word is with God, and the word is God, period. That's as for me. God never was. He always is. He's Amen. eternal. I say he's eternal. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He's eternal. So here's the thing now. Watch this. Watch this. In the beginning is the word. The word is with God. And the word is God. Or some translations. In the beginning was the word. And the word uh, what was with God. And the word is God or was God. So God and His Word, the, the Word and God, they are one. Right? Amen. So He is saying to this Sadducee, here's something you have to understand. There's something you have to understand. Are you not therefore mistaken with the way you are reasoning? There's seven people, seven men who married this woman, and you are now saying at the resurrection whose wife is she going to be and jesus immediately said you you are mistaken are you not mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of god that means if you had an understanding of scripture you cannot understand scripture through head knowledge you can only understand Scripture by the Holy Spirit revealing Scripture through revelation. Amen. Yeah. You say revelation? You seem to talk a lot about the Holy Spirit. What is all this business? Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. When Simeon took Jesus, the little baby in his hands, to be dedicated... He says, for now my eyes have seen your salvation. He was holding the word that is with God and the word that is God. Now being tabernacled in the flesh, he's holding the word in his hands, the baby. And he says, for now my eyes have seen the salvation of my God. And then he says, and he will be a light of revelation to the nations to israel he's a light of revelation that means through revelation and through insight of understanding scriptures 
that it is a spiritual dimension. You cannot just take a, lit uh, uh, a scripture literally without a spiritual revelation. Of course, you can do anything you want to. <laughs> you can do anything you want to. But that's what the Sadducees did. And the Pharisees and the could not seize and the would not seize. You see? They took scripture and, and I'm going to put that on your screen as well. They knew scriptures, but they did not know the power of God. See? I've just brought that up on my screen. The power of God is connected with scriptures. When, when you have revelation through your spiritual eyes, that's why the Apostle Paul prayed. Father, I pray, he said. That you will open up their, what? Spiritual eyes of their understanding. That they may see. For you to understand God, you've got to have understanding of the Word of God by revelation. Otherwise, you will, some may think he's a mean God. Of course, he allowed nations to be destroyed in the Old Testament. Hello? Mm -hmm. You've got to have the revelation of Scripture of the reason. What is the spiritual lesson? Remember the Bible says it is not by our might nor by our power but by the Spirit of God. Then in 1 Corinthians 2 it says uh, for who will understand God? Who knows his thoughts? Or who knows the thoughts of man except man's spirit? So who knows God's thoughts except the spirit of God? Amen. God is a spirit. God is not a legalistic document that you read. This is what the law says. Moses' law says, well, uh, if you do this, then you're going to be killed. If you do that, this is what will happen. Uh, well, it's a set of rules. And a set of rules could never bring true salvation to the consciences of the Israelites. Therefore, they were for always stubborn. They were for always fighting the things of God. And the Bible says in Hebrews that their conscience could not be cleansed. Therefore, they could not serve the living God. Hebrews chapter 9. For your devotion, you're welcome to read that. And it's all in there from verse 14 or so. Now, here we are, back here. This Pharisee is trying to confuse his natural understanding with a spiritual destiny that takes place not just whilst you're alive in this fleshly body, but the day you die. Your spirit returns back to God and your soul at the resurrection, your soul will have to give an account to what you've done with the life of Jesus. And at the resurrection, you will be raised up imperishable. That means a perfect body. 1 Corinthians 15 says that uh, imperfection will disappear because perfection, the Christ, that second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ when he returns on that last, that trumpet sound, uh, then the dead in Christ shall be raised first. Have you ever thought why the Bible says the dead in Christ? Those who were dead in Christ, allowing Christ to live through them. In other words, the Apostle Paul says, for I no longer live, but it is who that lives through me. Yes, Christ. Christ. See, when you are dead to self, then you are living in Christ. Because you allow Christ to come through you and to live through you. And then the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall be raised up first. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I know, I'm going to say glory to God. Amen. I say, the dead in Christ shall be raised up first. Hallelujah. <laughs> I make myself happy here. Hallelujah. 
the death in Christ. Somebody say with me, the death in Christ shall be raised up first. Raised up first. Raised up first. And the Sadducee, as you can see on my screen, had no understanding of scriptures. Scriptures is connected with God because God is his word. Every time you apply scripture, every time you apply scripture, you actually applying God. I'm just pausing so you can think of what I've just said. Every time you put scripture into practice, you are allowing God to be functioning through you. Because God is his word. And his word is God. And so when you put the word of God into practice by obeying the word, you're allowing God to live, to move, and to work through you. And God is then being applied to your circumstances. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any one of you want to say something about that? And I can have a sip of my iced tea. All good. Let's get back then. Yeah, by the resurrection. You see, this conversation that this a Sadducee is having with Jesus. Jesus said, you've got no understanding of the scriptures, nor of the power of God. Now think about this. When we are raised from the dead, when that final day comes and we are raised up as imperishable and we are in heaven. Heaven is not caught up with what you used to do. Heaven is caught up with what is now happening in heaven. <laughs> I say heaven is a perfect place. There's no more tears, no more sadness, no more sickness. It's all in the revelation, right? Right. I mean, heaven is a perfect place, right? In a heaven, you are not going to remember who has done you wrong. And this Sadducee was trying to cancel out eternity, life after death. He was trying to come really against heaven because... Uh, that is why there's a resurrection. And then there is judgment. Those who rejected Jesus Christ will go to a lost eternity. That means they will forever and ever be in a place where Satan rules and reigns. They will be forever in a place of torment. Yes. As known in modern language, hell. It is hell when your soul is tormented 24-7. But heaven on the other side is a place of peace, is a place of perfection, is a place of rest. Heaven is a place where there's no more tears. Amen? Heaven is a place no more tears. And uh, these, uh, the Sadducee was trying to uh, tell Jesus, he's trying to confuse the resurrection. I'm just looking at another scripture. I'm paging through here whilst I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm multitasking. My mouth is saying one thing. My brain is right here. But the Lord always shows up, right? And uh, uh, so he is trying to confuse people. I'm looking then Revelation 4 verse 1. After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. See? There is a heaven. Amen? And then a Re a Revelation 4 verse 2. It says immediately I was in the spirit. <coughs> I was in the spirit. Revelation 4 2. Capital S. That means Holy Spirit. I was in the spirit. Not in the flesh. 
when you in the spirit you do not side with the accuser when you in the spirit you are more conscious of right doing and what the, the righteousness of god than the unrighteous acts of the flesh you see when you challenge the resurrection you are challenging the very nature of god because jesus said that he is the god my father he is the god of abraham Isaac and Jacob. That means he is the God of the living, not of the dead. He's saying to the Pharisee, you're quoting Moses, and yet in the books of Moses, it is uh, being acknowledged. Uh, Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesus is quoting that the Father is their God. That means he is the God of the living, even though they have died. Because their souls went to paradise. Mm. Like Jesus at Calvary. The one thief rejected him. The other thief said to him, remember me today. And Jesus said, today you will be in paradise. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In a yeah. place where I am. Didn't he say, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come. And, and, and take you to be with me forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Right? Now, having said that, I'm looking here uh, because I want to focus on something as well uh, different here. Uh, the seals that were opened in Revelation uh, 6 verse 13. That there, it says, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Revelation 8 verse 1. I'm just picking up the word heaven in your concordance. Just look up the word heaven. Okay. So uh, then in Revelation 10, 1, I saw still another a mighty angel coming down from heaven. So there is a heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to get to Revelation about 21. It should be. Hallelujah. I just said hallelujah. <laughs> and, and there's a scripture, Revelation 19, verse 1. 19 verse 1 revelation after these things i heard a loud voice <laughs> amen after these things i heard a loud voice and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he uh hang on that was not the one uh 19 verse 1 revelation 19 verse 1 after these things i heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying hallelujah even in heaven they say hallelujah this is a l l we say hallelujah but hallelujah hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the lord amen okay now let me just see here yeah revelation 21 are you there in revelation 21 let me just go there in Revelation 21 verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. That was Jesus. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be there what? The, be there? God. And he said in verse 6, to me it is done i am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end i will give of the fountain of the water of life life freely to him who thirsts and he who overcomes shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son and then that new jerusalem then uh, it talks about uh, in verse 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me this great city, okay, ascending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, okay. And then there are the names, the 12 uh, uh, written on them, the, uh, there's the gates of heaven and the names written on them, which all the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, and uh, there's the gates from the east, you know, the south, the north, and so on. And uh, let me just get to the portion. And are you ready now? The glory of the new Jerusalem. Verse 22. K. 
Okay. Revelation 21, 22. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are in its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon or to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is it is the light. The Lamb of God is the light. Amen. And then it talks about heaven in itself. I want you to understand that heaven is a real place. Heaven comes to those that have lived a righteous life down here in the earth in honoring God through Jesus Christ. If you want to get to heaven, you, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. You've got to believe the scripture, which is the power of God, that as Jesus was raised from the dead, so you will be raised and I will be raised from the dead. You've got to believe scripture, which is the power of God, the scripture that says uh, that uh, when that last trumpet sound in 1 Thessalonians 4 so goes out, then you and I, the, uh, uh, when Jesus Christ returns, that this perishable body will become imperishable. Do you understand? Uh, that which can perish becomes imperishable. See? And, and then eternity is not having a record of your wrongs. There's no such thing as, excuse me, you married how many brothers? One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. uh, seven. Quite a lady, that. Seven brothers. She outlived them all. <laughs> However, it's not a matter of whose wife are you going to be. He says, I'm going to just go back there to Mark chapter 12. He says, in the resurrection, I want you to see that. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Mark 12, 25. I just had to get there. Let me just underline it in my own Bible here. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Amen. So tonight we rejoice that heaven is a real place. Amen. There is no more tears in that place called heaven because heaven is not a place where you are going to remember who has done you wrong. You are in a place of perfection. Yeah. Amen. A place of perfection. You see, you will be so conscious of holiness. And every time they will worship as Jesus was breaking the seals open. Holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb of God. Holy. You're going to be so conscious of perfection. Because there is no imperfection and no imperfect thought in heaven either. Amen. That means, you, you, you see, the Sadducees, they thought you're going to remember all the wrongs. There, there are no wrongs in heaven. There's only one who is right. And that is the Christ who has come to this earth to cancel all the wrongs. And he went and he presented his blood to his heavenly father as an atonement. And he sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat of our father upon which he is seated with Christ at his, at his right hand. And that mercy of our God triumphs over a judge mentality. That is why Romans 8 chapter 1 says, let me say this to you, Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They battling with the flesh. In Romans chapter 7, the, uh, the, the, the author says in Ro uh, Romans chapter 7, he says, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I do want to do, I don't do. It's like, woe is me. He says, what a wretch man I am. 
And finally, the focus is no longer in what I want to do, but it's what he has done. And Romans chapter 8 finally comes and he says, and it starts off Romans chapter 8 verse 1, for now there is no condemnation. That means no adjudgment for those that are in Christ Jesus. For what the law was powerless to do, the law of Moses, they're quoting the law of Moses to Jesus. The law of Moses is powerless. It's the works of the flesh. That's why Romans 8, 2 says, For what the law was powerless to do, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sin. You understand? He says, Now all the righteous requirements, read that in Romans 8, of the law is just like that, fully met in us. For those who live according to the spirit and not the flesh. Let me just, uh, let me just go there to, uh, what did I say, was it Romans 8, huh? Are you enjoying this Bible study, I hope? I trust. Amen. Uh, for the law of the spirit, Romans 8 verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. There's the law of the spirit. There's the law of the flesh. Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life. The spiritual laws of God is always life. 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 But you see the law of sin and death is the law of the flesh. Then verse 3. Watch now. Romans 8 verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak. There it is. Through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh. That's why you and I. If, when you are in Christ there is no more condemnation for us. Why? Because Jesus Christ condemned sin in the flesh through his death, burial, and resurrection. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, God is in the sound effects, eh? He's a sound God. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sound God. Amen. Brother Tom. Amen. Nobody will fall asleep with these sounds. Okay. Now, he says, uh, Romans 8, verse 4. Romans 8, verse 4. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Spirit. According to the spirit. Just like that, brothers and sisters. Boom. Just like that. Bam. Just like that. The whole law of Moses is fully met for those who do not walk according to the flesh to try and please God through the works of the flesh, but who now walk in the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. I trust y'all got something tonight. Brother Tom, sister, I'm just looking at, sorry, I'm coming to Mary Jane. Sister Mary Jane and uh, Sister Phyllis or Sister whoever, would you like to say anything about the teaching? What stood out or encourage the people or whatever you want to say pastor i have never ever figured out why after about the third husband the other four didn't disappear somewhere <laughs> i mean you know by the time three of them passed away and she survived i'd be kind of suspicious wouldn't you <laughs> Uh, I, I you just... know, 
there's a reason there's a reason why there's male and female in the flesh because God gave Adam and Eve the job of filling this earth yes and that's why that's why we are male and female but we're going to be in a changed body Yes. And heaven is a place that we're not going to be able to measure and we're not going to be able to um, understand it uh, using the same measurements and the same understanding that we have on this side of the grave. It's altogether different. It's something that our mind, uh, as it is now, can probably not fully get around to understand how beautiful and how wonderful heaven is going to be and uh, uh, you tried to bring out the point to us tonight, and I think most of us probably have figured it out, is these guys were just looking for something to start an argument with Jesus. That's all in the world that they were doing. And yet he took the stinger right out of the argument and said, there's, there's no wives. There's no marriage in heaven. Yes. And, you know, that, that shouldn't make us um, not look forward to heaven because all of us when we think of resurrection we think of being back together with loved ones that have gone before uh, but our relationship on the other side is not going to be the same kind of relationship that it is on this side come on now because our job on the other side is to bring glory and honor to the god who gave us life and gives it to us again amen yes I like this um, verse that you read about uh, Romans 8. Uh, it was um, 5, I think. It says, those who live according to sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. And then down in verse 6, it says, the mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Amen. That's Amen. what we got to aim for, life and peace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? And that's only brought on by the Spirit. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anyone else? I'm just going to turn here to, and we we, we uh, finish, but it's good to communicate. And I, I love what both of you are saying. And, and I'm just going to turn there to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Let me just go there. And you know, Jesus says that, and that's what's on the screen. He says, you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. That's a strong statement. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm just reading 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 17. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Christ rose from the dead. Muhammad is still in the grave. Hare Krishna is still in the grave. Allah is still in the grave. Yes. But our Lord Jesus, his grave is empty. He rose from the dead. That's right. He came from heaven and he's gone back to it. And he's going to come and get us again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the last enemy that must be destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15. Death. Is death. You see, I can go into all the other scriptures, but I'm, I don't want to go all there. But it says there, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 26. The last enemy that will be destroyed, Brother Tom just said it, is death. That is why we all are going to die in the flesh at some point right 
and we all have to return back to dust. But then 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and it is raised incorruptible. Amen. It is sown in dishonor. Dishonor. Like whose mm -hmm. wife, uh, whose husband is she going to, uh, whose wife is she going to be, you know. Uh, it is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in the glory. Glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is yep. sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. Listen, that can preach by itself. That's why we've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. It's clear. It says your body is so naturally, but it's going to be raised up as a spiritual body. So if, you, if somebody doesn't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I just put a question mark. How can you become spiritual if you uh, if you never acknowledge the Holy Spirit? It's a serious question. Mm -hmm. Now listen, verse 44, 1 Corinthians 15, 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, but the last Adam, which is Christ, he is a life giving spirit hallelujah sila <laughs> amen and amen i always get so excited when i'm in the middle of god's world that's his word when i'm in the middle of god's world mm, mm, mm. i forget about my world and that i'm in this world <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. Sister Phyllis, you want to just bless everyone who listened to this broadcast and just send us off with a blessing, if you don't mind? Okay. Father, we do want to thank you, of course, for this day and especially for this time uh, spent in study of your word. And Lord, as you reveal things to us, help us, Lord, to apply them to our lives and uh, to know that there's always hope in Jesus Christ and that, that Lord, he brings the life-giving spirit, Lord, that will guide us through our lives. Lord, thank you for each and every one who's uh, listening tonight, Lord. May they yes. be blessed. May they uh, learn something, Lord, that they hadn't realized before that uh, God is real, Jesus is real, heaven is real, and yes. to just let the Spirit be their guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen. And by the way, amen. this is our church. Uh, you know, this is a church of God, hey? A, a crossroads church, an extension of the church of God. Hallelujah. And uh, Sundays come and... Uh, experience what the freedom of the spirit is like in a service there's no right. big there's no big chiefs here only christ jesus <laughs> hey, hey, hey somebody did that <laughs> do that again brother Tom. hey did you hear that no, let's hear your horn yours is a little different than mine yeah yes this one right <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Well, good night, everyone. God bless good you. Night, Love good you night. all. Bye. Good night, all.